This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. He was the kind of man people noticed. An imposing, prosperous, well-liked farmer, known for his feats of strength and his capacity for endurance in the wilderness, Peter Jefferson had amassed large tracts of land and scores of slaves in and around what became Albemarle County, Virginia. There, along the Rivanna, he built Shadwell, named after the London parish where his wife Jane had been baptized. The first half of the 18th century was a thrilling time to be young, white, male, wealthy, and Virginian. Money was to be made, property to be claimed, tobacco to be planted and sold. There were plenty of ambitious men about, men with the boldness and the drive to create farms, build houses, and accumulate fortunes in land and slaves in the wilderness of the Mid-Atlantic. As a surveyor and a planter, Peter Jefferson thrived there, and his eldest son, Thomas, born on April 13, 1743, understood his father was a man other men admired. Celebrated for his courage, Peter Jefferson excelled at riding and hunting. His son recalled that the father once single-handedly pulled down a wooden shed that had stood impervious to the exertions of three slaves who had been ordered to destroy the building. On another occasion, Peter was said to have uprighted two huge hogsheads of tobacco that weighed a thousand pounds each, a remarkable, if mythical, achievement. The father's standing mattered greatly to the son, who remembered him in a superlative and sentimental light. The tradition in my father's family was that their ancestor came to this country from Wales, and from near the mountain of Snowdon, the highest in Great Britain, Jefferson wrote. The connection to Snowdon was the only detail of the Jeffersons' old-world origins known to pass from generation to generation. Everything else about the ancient roots of the paternal clan slipped into the mists, save for this, that they came from a place of height and of distinction, if not of birth, then of strength. Thomas Jefferson was his father's son. He was raised to wield power. By example, and perhaps explicitly, he was taught that to be great, to be heeded, one had to grow comfortable with authority and with responsibility. An able student and eager reader, Jefferson was practical as well as scholarly, resourceful as well as analytical. Jefferson learned the importance of endurance and improvisation early, and he learned it the way his father wanted him to, through action, not theory. At age ten, Thomas was sent into the woods alone with a gun. The assignment, the expectation, was that he was to come home with evidence that he could survive on his own in the wild. The test did not begin well. He killed nothing, had nothing to show for himself. The woods were forbidding. Everything around the boy, the trees and the thickets and the rocks and the river, was frightening and frustrating. He refused to give up or give in. He soldiered on until his luck finally changed. Finding a wild turkey caught in a pen, the family story went, he tied it with his garter to a tree, shot it, and carried it home in triumph. The trial in the forest foreshadowed much in Jefferson's life. When stymied, he learned to press forward. Presented with an unexpected opening, he figured out how to take full advantage. Victorious, he enjoyed his success. Jefferson was taught by his father and mother, and later by his teachers and mentors, that a gentleman owed service to his family, to his neighborhood, to his county, to his colony, and to his king. An eldest son in the Virginia of his time grew up expecting to lead, and to be followed. Thomas Jefferson came of age with the confidence that controlling the destinies of others was the most natural thing in the world. He was born for command. He never knew anything else. <laughs>